started. So we're going to be looking at extempore. Um, I've actually listened to one of their videos, so I have confirmed the pronunciation. Um, and it is, as I said, a tool for practicing and assessing interpersonal and presentational communication. So you could set up practice activities, but you could also set up assessments, um, which I know could is something that teachers are really looking at now as we head towards the end of the school year in this distance learning situation. And we're looking for more options for how we can assess our learners in a way that still reflects the standards that we're working towards. And so the first thing to know is just kind of what it is in a nutshell. So it allows you to create a variety of practice activities or assessment activities. Um, it is really primarily designed for both the interpersonal, which is that spontaneous, two-way, unrehearsed, not scripted communication as well as the presentational speaking and signing, which is in fact rehearsed. It's one way because presentational is just you prepare something that you're then going to deliver to an audience of people who will not interact with you while you're delivering your message. Um, you do get to draft it, script it, practice it, refine it, make it better. And this tool allows you um, the opportunity to design both practice and assessment activities for both of those modes of communication. It does have the ability to, um, for you to build in a rubric that will be available to you within the extempore site when you're looking at student work in order to evaluate their response. Your prompt that you design as the teacher for the students to respond to can include text, images, audio, and video. And then when you build each task, the responses that the students are able to do can have limits. For example, you can limit how much time they have to review the prompt or to listen to the prompt if you're speaking to them and you want them to respond to what you say. You can also limit how much time they have to record their response so that they can't just stall and you know take a whole minute to blurt out the sentence for I am 12 years old. Um, and finally, you can also limit it to where they don't have any retries and they can't listen to your prompt over again. Um, so you can set it up to where they can only listen to the prompt once if that's important to you. And you can also set it up to where they have to, they record and they submit and there's no retrying. That actually is important in some ways because a lot of the tools we like to use as language teachers, um, Seesaw, Flipgrid, which have very easy recording capability, they also have the means, for example, for students to pause the recorder, think about what they want to say some more, resume the recording, keep going, and so on. And that's, that's just not a feature of extempore. So it's nice to have multiple tools available so that you can use the right tool at the right time based on the needs that you and your learners have and what your targets are. Um, so when you have the slide deck, which I know you already got, you can actually click this image in order to go to the page that will let you sign up. And we'll revisit this at the end, but you will be signing up for a light account if you choose to do this. Your light account is everything Extempore has to offer. However, you are limited to three assessments that you create. So that might work for between now and the end of the year. Um, you might just be choosy and only use this, um, at least the, the assessments that you create from scratch. You might be really choosy and, and only do it, you know, only create one or two or three. But you also have access to what's called their grab and go community. And interestingly, when you take those activities and pull them into your account, you can fully edit them. So you can add more questions, edit the questions they gave you, and it does not appear that that counts against your three assessments. Um, you can have as many classes as you want, you can have as many students as you want, and there is still training and support even with the Light account. If you love the tool, let's say you want to use it next year, um, they are not doing any kind of special offering um, to help teachers out with distance learning during our shutdown. Um, that's, that's difficult right now, but it's almost better because next fall, teachers are going to have fallen in love with a whole bunch of tools this spring that are going to have to be paid for um, next fall because these companies aren't going to keep offering their tools for free forever. Um, this one isn't offering anything special. You can use their existing free account. If you decide you like it, um, I will show you at the end of the presentation the pricing. It is a bit pricey, actually, if you do need to go past the three 
unique assessments that you can create separate from their grab and go community. So here's a little bit about what the interface looks like and we're going to see both the teacher interface and the student interface. Once you sign in and once you create your account and sign in, you have nothing there initially. So you do you land on the classes page and you need to click the plus in order to create your first class. You give it a name and once you've created it, you're given a code you actually give that link to your students so that they can sign up. So if you're using Google Classroom, you put the link in Google Classroom so that all they have to do is click it and they can sign up. Okay. You then open the class that you've created and you have a plus button again, and that's to create your first assessment. Now remember, with the free account, you can only create three assessments but you can use everything in what's called the grab and go community. And that community includes assessments for English learners, as well as assessments in Spanish and assessments in French. And then you'll see later, once you have something in here, when you first go in and it's empty because you haven't done anything yet, um, you won't have this option. But as soon as you have your first assessment in here, you have a view as student button. And as a lot of us have seen in this distance learning scenario, it's difficult when tools like Google Classroom don't give us a view as student option and we're trying to support our students. So this actually gives you a way to see the assessments that you are working on in the same way that your students will. So that you know how to help them or what instructions to give them in order to successfully access and then complete the activity from a technology standpoint. Beneath that, once you have students who join your class, remember they'll use the link to do that. Once you have students who join your class, they will um, appear in the student list. When you want to create your first assessment for the class, so my first class, I just called it French 1, um, you will click on the plus in order to create an assessment. You'll give that assessment a name. You can actually give it a timeline, including a specific time of day for it to start and a specific time of day for it to end. You will decide if it is an assessment for individuals or groups. And the question marks here are always intended to help you. You can always click on that to get more information to help you make a decision, for example, about whether you would choose individual or group. Most of the time, um, teachers are going to choose individual. You're trying to assess students individually, but the group option could be a really interesting one to consider, especially with um, the need for them to be able to speak with a variety of partners. You also need to suggest how students will respond. And notice they actually do have a text response. So in theory, you could also use this to get some either um, interpretive communication data, uh, whether how well they understood an authentic video or an authentic audio. And they could write some answers in English if you're not trying to test their writing as well and you're just trying to gauge whether or not they understood it okay. Or you could have it be written in the target language if you're trying to assess their writing. Most people don't use this tool for that simply because there are so many other ways to um, assess student writing and even comprehension. But it is a feature that is available so you could have it all in one place. You can actually choose if students will, uh, will respond via video. Um, so assuming they have a working webcam or they're using a mobile device, they'll be able to record themselves and submit that with video. You also have audio as an option. Notice you do have to choose one and then you hit next and there's even more help at the bottom. You can actually watch a little two and a half minute explanation video to help you get through the choices you need to make just in this first part of creating your assessment. As you scroll down to create your assessment, you can optionally decide if you'd like to include a description. So they have some grayed out language here that says, example, use your textbook pages 98 to 99 to complete the questions in this assessment. Do you wish to publish grades immediately so students will join and they'll get a little message back that says they have a grade available? And if so, are you going to provide a numeric score or just give them feedback? If you choose to provide a numeric score, it will automatically pop down an opportunity for you to create a rubric to use while assessing the responses that they have given. If you say no, then there's no need for a rubric, so it doesn't give you that option. Do you want the students to have a time limit 
for how long they can spend reviewing the prompt, whether it was a simple conversation and it's a question answer thing and you record a question and they're now going to record an answer. Do you want them to have more time to review the prompt? And if, if not, or if so, you just leave it as no, there's no time limit. They can rewatch the prompt and everything, or you can limit it to as little as 15 seconds so that they don't have a ton of time to keep reviewing it. Do you want to limit how much time they have to complete their response? The minimum is 15 seconds. Or you can say that they have unlimited time. Do you want them to be allowed to re-record so they would record it and go, oh, that was a bad one. I don't want to turn that into my teacher. I'm going to re-record. Or do you not want them to be able to re-record, which is particularly important perhaps for interpersonal speaking, where you wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to redo your conversation. So if you say you're going to provide a numeric score, it then pops down an area for you to create a rubric. What's the criterion called? For example, there could be criteria such as pronunciation, um, choice and use of appropriate vocabulary, choice and use of language structures for the intermediate students, and so on. And then what is a description? What does it look like to get a five on that criterion versus a four versus a three versus a two? So in that description, you can actually provide that getting a five on this means pronunciation is accurate with correct inflections. Uh, a three is that pronunciation is satisfactory, but there may be some you know, errors that impede, impede understanding once in a while. And a one would be pronunciation is very hard or even impossible to understand. Um, and so, of course, that's just a blanket example they give and it doesn't match vocabulary. So you would want to make sure that your description for how they will be scored matches the criterion that you're writing about. And then if you need to add additional criterion, you just add them. So again, you could have choice and use of vocabulary, pronunciation, and so on. Then it's time to begin adding your questions. So you need to decide if you're actually going to type the question, because if it's an interpersonal speaking, they wouldn't get to see the questions in advance. That's not how we have conversations with people. So you might have a title as simple as this is question one and your question text might just say, listen to the audio file below and then respond. Because if you type the question, you're not sure if they are understanding it because they understand what you said or because they understood what, you, what they were able to read when they could see the prompt in writing. Once you type whatever you want or don't want, you can choose if you want to upload a file to support this question, if you would like to record a video or if you would like to record an audio. Um, and I believe if you choose video or audio, you can also upload existing video or audio. We'll take a look at that in a minute. If there's going to be additional questions, make sure you do save and add another. And as you can see, again, you have question marks here that you can click on to get more information about each section. And you have an explanation video to support you with how to develop your questions and add media. For example, this particular prompt comes from one of their grab and go um, assessments in English. And so the question title is this morning before school. The question text is walk me through your morning routine. For example, what time did you wake up and what did you eat for breakfast? We are attaching an image file and it is right here. And if we don't like it, we can delete it. If you decide to record audio, you will initially, of course, one time you'll need to allow your microphone. The first time that you choose video, you'll need to allow your microphone and your video camera, your web camera. Then all you have to do is press, oops, is press the record button. And then when you're done, you stop and you press use audio and it will now be an audio file that is attached to your, um, to your prompt. And let me back up and re-explain. Actually, if you already have an audio or video file saved on your device, as opposed to recording the question yourself, then you would just choose file and you would upload it by choosing the file option. And that would provide them with either the audio or video file that they need. 
once you're done with your assessment, um, you can invite students to the class so that they can do this activity. You can also click view as student so that you see how it looks and how it will look for your learners. Um, you can copy the link to it. This is actually the link. Sorry. This is the link to your class. And when they get to your class, they will see any assignments that you have prepared there. So that feature of the visibility date can be important. Um, I noticed today I happened to import, I wanted to try out the grab and go section. And there's no way to not import all of the activities in one category. So now when you go into my practice class, you're going to see that there's 29 activities. We're not doing 29 activities today, but I didn't have time to set up a start time and a due time to hide 28 of the 29 activities for you. So um, this ability to designate a start time at which point the assessment or activity will become visible can be really important since the students don't ever get a link to an activity, they get the link to the class. And once they're in the class, they can always get back to the class to see whatever new activities you have created or assigned to them. So now we're going to look at the student view a little bit. Um, I actually did not use their student view. Instead, I just signed in with a different account just to see what the student view looked like. And so when they first get there, they click, they click on the link that was sent to them by the teacher and it says, okay, apparently you're enrolling in this class called French One. What do you want to do? Um, I didn't have an extempore account already in this email address that I used. So I had to choose create new extempore account. Your students should just go ahead and sign in with Google. And now they're in and that's all there is to it. There is a mobile app. So if they are on a mobile device, they should definitely use the app. It will always work better than trying to use the web-based version um, on a phone. In addition, they can now click on the student portal. And I actually do recommend that because by clicking on the student portal, they actually can do a camera and microphone check and get it all set up to work before they try your first assessment. So I'm doing a record, I recorded a little test video to make sure that it worked. Um, and then I clicked that I can see and hear everything and I'm done, or I could click I'm having issues and it will take me to some support options. When the students are all set up, they actually are going to complete your activity or your assessment. So you can see here, <laughs> I had one that I had practiced with last week and so technically it was past due because I had set a, pre, a date for last week. So there are no current ones, there's one past due, there's nothing in the future and I've completed nothing. So I'm gonna click where it says past due assessments and that's over here. It says it's late as of April 24th, but go me, I'm still gonna do it. So I'm gonna now click on that assessment now that I opened that up and I can tell that it has two questions. So I'm gonna click on question one and it warns me, all right, teacher has set it up so that you only get one try at this. Are you ready? They hit okay. Here is my prompt. They have to click to play it. Here is their opportunity to click to record an answer. As they're recording, it reminds them to stop recording when they're done. So I've been recording for three seconds so far then I stop recording, I can play it back and listen, but there's really nothing else I can do because the teacher already set it up to where I can't re-record it. So it is what it is. Hi, I just noticed that someone actually else, someone else had joined us. So let me put the slide deck in the chat. That's what I'm using to support you today. And you can go ahead and open that up anytime. And then they can uh, submit the attempt. And then it tells them, good job, you answered all the questions. You're gonna to have to pretend I went back to question two and I also did it, which I did <laughs> earlier. And so it gives them a confirmation that you've answered everything and you can go back to that assessments page to see if there's anything left for you to do or if you have any kind of um, work or feedback from your teacher. So then as the teacher, you need to find and grade the student work or at least provide feedback if you're not providing a grade of some kind. So when you're in your extempore account, you always open on the classes page. But if you click over to grading, that will show you where you have work that needs review. 
you can, as you get going, if you have multiple classes, you can set it up to where you only see one class at a time. And then you will see the assessment that's available. I'm going to click on the word view. And now I can see that I only happen to have one student here. It's going to default to looking at it student by student. However, um, I could actually look at it question by question instead and go through all of the responses for question one and then go through all of the responses for question two. If there was more than one student in this class, I would be able to toggle through the students with these arrow keys that are up here in the upper right hand corner. This is my question one. As the teacher, I don't need to review that again. And this is where it shows that my student has actually recorded something um, as a response. It also tells me at what time that response was submitted. And it notes for me as the teacher that, by the way, that was late in case as a teacher I'm doing anything particular about late work that comes in. Also, when you look at your students, if students haven't even tried it, you can exclude them from the list so that when you toggle through, you'll only see students who have done the assignment and it will just hide students who didn't do it. So those would be students who joined your class but never came into this assignment to do the work. There is a place for you to type feedback. It is limited to 3,000 characters, so that's a pretty generous limit. You can also audio record feedback and you can video record feedback. That's particularly useful with languages since we often want to provide feedback that helps with the pronunciation and the flow and the intonation of what our target languages sound like. If um, in this case there are two questions, question one and question two, I could listen to question one, put feedback, click submit feedback, click over here to question two, listen to it, put feedback, and so on. Or I can default, it's going to start on question one, listen to question one, provide my feedback, hit submit feedback and next question in one click so that it will automatically take me to question two. So if you would like to listen to all of that student's work at the same time, that would be the better workflow. Listen to the first one, give them feedback, submit and go to next question. If you prefer to listen to the whole class answering the same question at once, then the better workflow is question one, listen to it, give feedback, toggle to the next student. Feedback, submit feedback, toggle to the next student. Now you'll just keep listening to question one the whole time. You can also see that there's one student in the class who has started answering it and there's nobody who hasn't answered. So this will look like more meaningful information when you have more students in there, of course. So as I already said, you could click on the question you want to listen to if it's not the first one. And then as I already said, you can provide feedback in a variety of ways, text, audio, or video, and then either submit feedback or submit feedback and go to the next question. You have classes and students, so you can go to your classes page to manage your classes. If you do need to resend the link to the class so that other students can join, this is where you would go to get the link for your classes. You also have the ability to look at assessments for the classes, and since I only have one, the interface is pretty clean. There's only one class, so now we're just going to look at assessments and students. So when I look at my French one class, I have one assessment, I have one student. I can actually continue that assessment and continue editing, although it doesn't totally like it when you change the assessment after people have already started answering. So certain features will not be able to be edited. The share button that you see here is not for giving the assessment to your students, but rather for adding a colleague and like sending it off to a colleague, just so you know. As I mentioned earlier, we just went through the process of creating our own assessment from scratch and sending that out to students. But you could actually use their grab and go area, which is going to be particularly helpful since you have full access to it with the free account, um, as opposed to the assessments you create, which you can only do three of on the free account. So as you can see, there are 29 different speaking activities and those 29 activities are available in English, or in Spanish or in French. They are 
separated by proficiency range. So you, we are getting better and better at understanding what proficiency ranges our learners really are at, meaning if they weren't in our classroom, had no books, no notes, and no access to the teacher, how well would they respond in a variety of situations? Um, so you'll be able to choose if you want to bring in novice, intermediate, you know, novice high, or so on. So we're going to take a look. You start by clicking on the language. So for this sample, I actually picked English. So you click on the language whose activities you want to import. And then you have to choose the level. You will import all of the activities for that level. That's why I was saying earlier, it could be important to go ahead and spend some time if you do that, setting up some start dates that are in the future so that the class doesn't see the ones that you don't need them to see. So once you do that and you say that I wanted to do the intermediate English ones, for example, you then have to sign back in. So just sign back in and then click the add button to add all of the activities from that set the intermediate English to your account. And now there's a whole bank of 29 assessments just for intermediate English that I can assign to my learners. The nice thing is I can open this up and I can pick one of the assessments. This is just one of the 29. And there's an edit button. There's also an add question button. So I actually have the ability to edit the existing questions and add additional questions of my own that fit the same type of scenario. So this will look familiar to you because it's basically going to open up in the editing interface. So this assessment description is really intended for teachers who are new to extempore and it's not useful to your students. So you might want to delete that. You probably want to delete the title. That title doesn't make sense to students and you'd want to replace it with something else. Some of you will decide that you want to have a time limit to review and you want there to be a time limit to respond and you don't want them to re-record. So you can fully edit it so that you can make those changes. There are three questions and I can even edit each of those questions. But once I'm done, I'm just going to hit save and now I have it in my account. So we're actually going to try it if you would like. Um, oh, and our timing's really good actually. So we're going to try it and I'm going to exit out of my screen share really quick. Well, no, not quite yet, but I'm gonna exit out of full screen. Both of you are actually in the slide deck. So if you can go to slide 47, um, well, yeah, one of you is probably more in Zoom right now than in there, but if you can get back to your Chrome browser and go to slide 47 of the slide deck, if you click on the link, it will then allow you to click on it again in order to open it up so that you can actually go to my little demo class. And remember, you're a student, and so you're getting to see the student side, you will need to sign in. Um, Hopefully, it shouldn't be a problem, but go ahead and sign in with Google um, and say that, yes, you want to, the only thing I'm concerned about, I'm hoping it doesn't cause a problem for you to have a teacher account. I'm trying to decide if you have a personal email, and that's what I did. I used my personal email to go in. Um, it's also Google, but I, I purposefully did not use my school email to try the student side. If you have a personal email address that you don't mind using, I would recommend you do that simply because I'm not sure if it will then cause a hiccup if you try to create your teacher account with the same address, if you know what I mean. So if you have a personal email that you're willing to use to try my demo class, I think that might be a safer way to go. Let me know in the chat when you have gotten in and you're getting ready to start that first activity. Um, so back on my screen, um, what you can see now is that we have the, the students and which students have attempted the questions and which have not, and the fact that I have not yet reviewed any responses. I do wanna correct something I said earlier. These arrows in the upper um, right corner do not in fact go to the next question. They toggle between actual assessments. Um, so the only way to go from question to question is either to click on the question that you want, right? Or to look by questions rather than by student, or 
to provide feedback on the first question and then save, say submit feedback and next question. So you do have a couple of ways to go between questions, but the arrows in the upper right are actually for going from assessment to assessment in your account rather than question to question. So Curtis, I know you had a chance to try it. Um, do you have any thoughts or um, things you liked about it from now that you've seen what a student might do with it that you would like to share or um, things that you wish it did or <laughs> anything like that? Mm, I like it because we do um, um, IB testing and part of, you know, one of the, the IB assessments is the speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's always, for me, it's always a challenge. Yeah. It, first of all, the location. Where do you do one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations in a classroom with 35 students? Right. So I've always, up until now, I've always done it in the hallway, which is a big mess. Yeah. Because I've got students that always have passes to the office. They have passes to the restroom. And uh, it's, it's just a location. The, the, the way the testing goes is horrible. And I think I would use this a lot more than uh one on you know the thing is, right. is one in, one on one conversations is the best but this is this would be second best because right. you can definitely uh have them get into the uh i guess the make it interpersonal with prompts questions that they haven't seen before and they have to respond to it as soon as they see the question then they have to respond with video with audio and video and then you could also grade it at the same, you know, like you yeah. said, you could just scroll through yeah. and either test one or grade one student at a time. Uh, all five questions that you ask the student, you could do one student at a time, or you could do one question at a time and do the whole class. So mm -hmm. I, that's the very first thing that I thought of when I saw this. It'll be nice when you, like, if you check out a Chromebook cart, and especially if you're setting it up and you, if they're going to have to assess in a way that's time limited anyway, and where they can't redo, like they get one shot at it, then it's good for them to have at least one practice activity with feedback that mirrors that. And this could be that practice activity as well. And it's nice if you put, if you put them all on Chromebooks, you could have that assessment done in under five minutes and the whole class is done. And then you can go back and listen. Um, yeah, because with IB, there's a minimum, you know, they have to speak for a minimum of two minutes and a minute and a half, two yep. minutes. So you could put the time on timer on there and give them the prompt, give them two minutes to speak, and then they're done. Yeah. And you'd have the whole class done. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice. Um, so, yeah, and I think, and you saw kind of a couple of different ways where there was like a picture, there was an audio attached to one, and there was a video attached to one. Um, so there's a number of ways that you can do the prompts as well. Mm -hmm. um, oops, my thing moved, hold on. I'm trying to get back to my slide deck, there we go. And I'm gonna get back to the end here where we were trying it. I'm just gonna back up a little bit from where I was. Okay. So we're actually almost done um, and the last thing I want to make sure you know is that, as I said at the beginning, there is a free version and a paid version. Um, the free version includes three assessments that you create, plus all the grab and go activities. So you can take the French or Spanish beginner and have all of the beginner ones and all the intermediate ones and all the advanced ones if you'd like. And those, when you click on each assessment, each question is available to you and is fully editable, including deleting the question if it's just not an appropriate question for your learners and adding additional questions. So that really does help even though there's a pretty hard limit on the number of assessments you can create from scratch. Um, the paid licenses are expensive. Basically, they cost $8.99 per student for one year. You would need a substantial grant or something to cover even one class and that would give you unlimited assessments um, but it does come at a cost so um, most of I, I suspect that for the time being especially with the budget cuts we are expecting you'll make full use of everything you can do with those grab and go activities um, 
so that you can put them uh, into your classes as well as the three assessments you can create. And that's per, I don't know if that's total, the three assessment or if it's per class, I think it's total. So it's not like you can create, in my case, like I can't create a French one class, a French two class, a French three class, and a combo four AP class, and then create three assessments from scratch for each one. I can create three assessments from scratch total, but I have unlimited access to the grab and go activities for French. So I can grab those and kind of cannibalize them in order to tailor the questions that I'm asking to the specific content that my students need to learn about or need to um, demonstrate their proficiency with. Okay, so this slide deck does include the link on in, if you are interested. And as I said, it is $8.99 per student. Um, but that actually, oh, we do a couple more things. I also provided a help link. So the image is clickable. And then you also have a link to more help and videos to help you get going. And that already brings us to the end. Um, um, the other thing I wanna make sure you know is that in the slide deck, when it comes to the grab and go activities, I ended up having to research for them. So I wanna be sure that you see um, where it is that I gave you a link to go get the grab and go activities. I'm just trying to find my own uh, section here. Um, there we go. Um, so in your slide deck, you actually have a slide that talks about the grab and go for the first time. I'm just trying to scroll through and find it. And that slide, that, that picture on there is clickable. Hold on a second. So again, these are the grab and go assessments, which are on slide 37, are, uh, are the ones that you can use, as I've said a few times, you can actually use them completely. It is not part of your limit of three assessments. You okay. may use as many or as few of these as you want. And this is the one where if you click the image, it will actually take you to the bank um, because I, I haven't been able to find the bank on their um, when you're signed into your account, I can't find the bank. And that's probably because it's separate from your account. It's available to everybody. So you actually have to go on the main extempore page where you're not signed in. Um, but I provided that link to help or that picture to help you get there. Sorry. Um, so that you can just click this image and it will take you here. You then, as I said, click on the language you want to import choose the level that you want, at which point it will ask you to sign in so it knows what account to put all those activities into. Click add, and now you have 29 intermediate English assessments that are fully editable. So you can keep them as is, you can remove questions, you can edit questions, you can add new questions so that the ways in which students are responding and the things they are asked to respond to match up with your learning targets. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think one thing we're still looking for are ways that we can provide students with opportunities to have multiple speaking partners, right? That they're going to work with. Mm -hmm. um, so if I go into my assessments here and I pick this first one and I say I want to add a question. Oh, no, it won't let me do that because this one is already set up as, let me go back. I have to edit the full assessment. Um, and I decide that this assessment, is it grayed out? Oh, it is grayed out because it started answering. Fine. I'll start a new assessment. <laughs> I can't, I, that was one of the types of things I can't mess with. I didn't want to start a new assessment because I already have, <laughs> I'm already on one assessment now. Um, let me see if I go back to my classes. I'm going to delete my demo. I've already gotten what I needed out of it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna delete it and it cannot be undone. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna delete it. It can't be deleted because there are students. If you want to delete, please delete the student responses. Okay, well, now we all learned something from this. Um, let's see, if I create a new assessment, I'll just do it that way and I'll hit group the number, so here's what it's going to do. And this is actually really cool. I'm gonna grab um, a shot of this. If you choose group, it will actually allow you to create a room 
with a specific number of students in it who will then be engaged in a speaking activity. And that allows us to also have that sense of them having opportunities to engage in conversations with people in addition to just the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what the group feature does. Um, and then you move on from there as far as creating the rest of the assessment. And I think some of the parameters are kind of limited at this point. Um, I'm noticing that when I hit group, I can have anyone from anywhere from two to 15 students in a group. It kind of defaulted at seven, but I can drag that slider anywhere I want. And then it does have everything grayed out about how students will respond because I can't remember now if it's just all audio or if it's only video. It looks like the audio is what the default is and I can't change that. Um, so for the group, they're like, no, there's, this is the only thing we're gonna be able to handle for the group. And then do I wanna provide a numeric score? And I can still do all of my other limitations, limit how much time they have, limit how long they have to respond, allow them to re-record, and I can create that group assessment as well where they have to engage in a conversation for a certain amount of time with other students. Now remember, that's going to count against your bank of assessments. You'll have to use it really wisely or you might wanna create a really generic one that says you're going to have this group assessment and you're going to be speaking for two minutes on the topic that was presented in Google Classroom. And then you can reuse that assessment right that same assessment like put it in a i don't know if you need to maybe create a class that's called the group assessment class and have students join it i mean it could get a little messy but i noticed there's no way to take their grab and go activities and turn them into group assessments mm -hmm. so this is one place where you would want to maybe be really thoughtful about how you can leverage this group <laughs> assessment option since it is going to count against your three um assessments that you can create but it could be a feature that's worth looking at 